How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 15, our final bye week before the conference championship. And it's been like two weeks since I've played this game, so uh, I'm a little bit worried that we're going to go into this just a little bit rusty. Currently sitting 12-0, perfect regular season, number one in the country. We do have uh, just a little bit of recruiting to do before we sim through, and then we'll see... Who we match up against and uh, who ends up in each respective conference championship game. So let's go ahead and get through our recruiting here. Uh, we don't have a crazy amount to do this week. We're just kind of still in these battles. Uh, Lee Sims is locked out, but we will use our final unlock. Open the door with the guard there. That'll jump us up. We'll give him the 700 points and then we have... 400 points to give to somebody else and I'm not really sure if any of these players are really going to be worth it uh, or if we'll have any chance. So uh, we'll just give them to Benjamin Harrison, see if we can get another player to commit. Try to fill out this class for Coastal before we leave. So with that done, let's go on towards our conference championship week. We know that we have made it. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I'm curious to see who our opponent is in this SEC championship game. And then we'll take a look at the rest of the matchups around the country. Still in recruiting battles uh, with a bunch of top players. A lot of the guys lower on our board have committed elsewhere or have locked us out. We're not too worried about that. Uh, that's just not in our interest. And okay, an interesting matchup for us this time. Number 20, Alabama at 8-4. Trying to get that ninth win on their season. Uh, they are the better team overall wise, but obviously they've had a, a less than stellar season. We are projected to win this game. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look though at the rest of our conference championship games. And then we'll take a look at who isn't playing a conference championship. So for the SEC, it's us and Bama. In the MAC, it's Ohio and Northern Illinois. Uh, CUSA is Middle Tennessee State and UAB. With the Mountain West, it's Fresno State, Colorado State. The ACC is Clemson and Miami. The Pac-12 is Cal and USC. And in the Big Ten, it's Wisconsin and Ohio State. Some pretty big games, uh, especially these last three. Decent matchups, pretty highly ranked. Uh, and then there's a couple of uh, conferences that still won't be playing conference championships. So... We'll start with the Sun Belt. We can see that South Alabama 11-1 has managed to win that one. In the American, it is Navy somehow pulling it out over Cincinnati with the worst record uh, and the slightly worse overall, but they get it done. How about the Big 12? This is a big one. Number three in the country, West Virginia will win the conference, but because there's no conference championship game... Uh, the Sooners are going to have to get an at-large bid into the playoffs. West Virginia, with the win in conference, has punched their ticket into the playoffs, even though they're lower ranked. So uh, we imagine Oklahoma will make that at-large bid, but I'm curious to see uh, you know, what seed they end up getting in the playoffs. Our final look is at these two independents. Army, 8-4. and four. Uh, Decent season for them. Best one that we've seen in a little bit. And BYU continues to disappoint in this dynasty. Uh, just going 3-8 and eight this year. Heading into this conference championship game, Radon and Marquise are still on that Heisman watch list, but they're now sitting at 2-4. and four. So both of them will be looking to have good games if they want to win said award. And kind of speaking of that, passing leaders, Radon third in the country with 3,100 yards through the air. Rushing-wise, it's Mike Fontaine for us as our leading rusher, only 721 yards and the 181st uh, highest rusher in the country. So just not super impressive this season. Uh, Marquise is our leading receiver, seventh in the country with just over 1,000 yards. Sack-wise, we have David Wilson down there at 15th with eight. Uh, a couple of sacks could really jump him up the list. Uh, Interception-wise, Spencer Stanley, the true freshman, sitting at 11th with five interceptions on this season. And I don't know if Marcus Frederick will show up on the kicking list, but some impressive kicks. 56 yarders from uh, kickers from Mississippi State and Nebraska. Well, let's go ahead and start working towards what we're here for. SEC Conference Championship game. 
against Alabama. Not an impressive season so far. All their losses coming on national TV, so that's where I'm going to hope. And it looks like they have a couple of injuries. That could be what has caused this. We have had a pretty easy season, all things considered. Uh, a couple of close games here and there, but for the most part, doing our job, getting things done. Bama started the season 0-3. Managed to claw back to 500 before taking their final loss of the season at uh, the current number 10, Tennessee. That is a tough stretch early in the season. A current number 7, 12, and 10 all on the road. They managed to start to, you know, scrape the season back. Going on a nice winning streak before beating Auburn in the Iron Bowl. But they'll have to go through us if they want to win the SEC and make it into the playoffs. Alabama is that 99 overall with a 99 offense and a 95 defense, so we will expect them to be pretty solid. Uh, I don't really know what we're going to go with. Maybe a black jersey. I feel like we don't do that combo quite as much. And Alabama, well, they're Alabama, so uh, I actually don't mind a colorway if it allows us to do so. What's the difference between their playoff home and their home? I don't see anything. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go uh, red versus black on this one and we'll get into it. The Crimson Tide, third in the country in scoring points behind us at first. We've got a big margin there. Uh, offensively, though, the rest of the way, they do get a lot more yards than us. Better uh, in general, better at passing, better at running. And their defense, uh, their defense has honestly struggled. I would say for the most part, we have a better defense so long as we can contain the pass a little bit, but fourth best passing offense in the country against the basically worst pass defense in the country is going to be difficult for us to stop. I can't remember if in conference championship week it shows next year's best players, but if so, they're not looking too good for Bama. Three guys, 96 overall, but two of them injured for this game, including the quarterback out for the season and a tight end out for five weeks with the dislocated elbow. So... Uh, that's going to help us tremendously. Not having to play against a uh, 96 overall quarterback will certainly uh, change the tone of this game. So here we are. Hoping to get this one done in the championship game. Make it to the playoffs. And then we can start our run towards that national championship. Uh, Alabama will lose the toss. And we're going to elect to kick this one off. Frederick is going to go ahead and get us underway. And again, it's been like two weeks since I've played this game, so it might be a little bit rusty early on as this is a great return for Bama. They get themselves out almost to the 30-yard line. We're going to start simple with just some man defense here and see what we can get going. And oh, a bad start for Bama. False start backs them up five yards before they can even get a playoff. I'll be expecting the pass now on this first and 15. And no, they're going to hand it off up the middle. The blocking is impeccable. And it's down to the last man there. Smith getting the tackle. That's a suboptimal start for this defense. They're going to hand it off again. And we're there with Don Riley to get the tackle. Let me give up a yard that time. Drop into the zone on what might be the first pass attempt for Alabama. No, they're going to keep it. Quarterback's got it. And he's going to get taken down five yards back. Durham Finch able to find his way back there and force the third and 13 for the Crimson Tide. They'll step back, looking to throw. Corner routes open. Smith gets there, but Logan is just a little bit too late, and it's another first down from Alabama. So on uh, the big play, Joe Hines, the backup quarterback, comes in and gets it done. This one a run. We bring some pressure, but it's not quite enough, and they get a good pickup of five yards. Hoping to find a little bit of... Uh, you know, power here from the defense. Let's get a stop. Don't want to give up a touchdown early. It's a counter on the running game. He's weaving around all the space in the world. And finally, the tackle comes. That was so close to a touchdown. So Alabama coming out and just punching us in the mouth. Uh, we're the number one rush defense in the country, but it doesn't look like it. The way that we're starting in the third run for Stewart is another big one. He's going to get tackled, but he's almost at the goal line. 23 yards. Just uh, over committing a little bit to these angles and it's working way too well for Bama. This one a run out towards the edge and we will get the stop for now. Holding them at least to a second goal. And it looks like it's another run and they give it to the fullback. He almost gets in, but the big tackle slows it down. Third and goal. I got to assume this is going to be a run the way they've started this game, but that could be a little bit dangerous. There's the handoff out towards the edge. Don Riley's there, the big hit. Drops Timothy Smith at the line. 
But we are not out of this one yet. Alabama electing to go for it on fourth and goal. I'm expecting the run. It is a handoff, and we're there to get the stop. It's a turnover on downs, hitting him in the backfield, and the defense holds. So an absolutely massive play from the D there. Allows us the chance to be the first to score. Bama could have had three points, but they leave it on the table. And now we'll just start to do a little bit of running of our own, giving it to Mike Fontaine up the middle. Get us away from the danger of the end zone. If we manage to find the end zone, it'll come at the end of what we can assume is a pretty long drive. They're pressed up early on Marquise, but I'm going to continue to run the ball. We're getting some positive yards. Uh, see if we can get the first down. Trying not to become too predictable, but we will run it. This time a read option and Radon keeping it. Going to make some contact and it's not enough for the first down fourth and inches. I think we're going to have to punt this one away. Really, really tempting to go for it in this situation, but just not quite going to be the case as we will boot it away. And seems like a decent kick. They'll field it at the 40 yard line, but he's got blockers and they're working really well so bama again starting with great field position on this drive crimson tide came out and ran right at us in that first drive we'll see if we can slow them down here bring a little bit of a blitz it is going to be a run it's a counter logan smith the safety on the blitz is able to track him down and get the tackle maybe they just don't trust this quarterback to throw all that much because it's just all runs as there's another one and we're lucky that, that wasn't a first down Bringing the house on this one, expecting the counter. It is a counter, it is handed off, and there's just no one out on the edge. So another first down, they continue to run with success. This is one of those spots where you know what's coming, but what can you actually do to stop it? Another handoff, time, okay. We finally got to him. He had a little bit of time to work out where he was going, but eventually just kind of closed the door on him. Second and nine, expecting the pass here. Hoping that it's a pass. No, it's a run, but thankfully for us, it's towards the edge, and Will Phillips is going to get there. And Logan Smith is going to close it out, third and seven. Certainly, we would see Bama kick the field goal in this position should they kick it or should they not get the first down, and that's the case. They throw it short. It's completed, but four yards short of the line to gain. So the kicker will come out onto the field on this drive as Bama will look to put the four, first points up of the game. Nearing the end of this first quarter, that is up and through. Bama up 3-0. On one hand, it's a little bit disappointing that we aren't able to score first, but on the other, defense has done a solid job stopping them. Two drives in a row, eventually shutting down the run and giving the ball to Marquise Jackson on the kick return. We're out to about the 43-yard line. Open up this drive near midfield. We're going to go to the air this time. Three passes exclusively on the first drive. I'm late in throwing this one, but we find Marquise, and he's got a six. I think that could have been a whole lot more, but we'll have to settle with what we got. As I'm a little bit skeptical about running this one, we're just going to hand it off. Actually, never mind. <laughs> the clock is going to come to an end. Thought maybe we could catch him out, throw one deep, but, well, we were kind of getting the defense to transition, but not the case, and we come to the end of this first quarter. Defense, a couple of decent stops, but Bama in the lead. Well, the defense is really playing pressed up. I'm not sure we'll have time to get this pass off, but we'll try it anyways. The play action. A is open, and Williams holds on to it through the contact. He broke the tackle as well. Unfortunately, another Bama defender was there to get it, but Johnny Williams, 19 yards there. An impressive catch from the receiver right on two and two to start this game that's always good we'll run this up the middle and mike fontaine picks up a solid chunk seven on that play all right we'll go to the air again marquise was open on this last time i'm not going to need to give it to him though because we've got jj Barr inside the 10 and of course he's going to hold on to the ball it honestly seems a little bit weird to say but he might be one of the best receiving fullbacks uh, in college football. Definitely handing this one off to Mike Fontaine. He's got some space and he's keeping the legs moving. Somehow he finds seven again. Alabama coming in with this 95 overall defense, but we're doing a much better job than I had originally anticipated running the ball. And Mike Fontaine's in untouched on the three yard carry. And just like that, we take the lead seven to three early in the second quarter. 
So let's see what the defense can do once again. Not going to allow them to return this kick. We'll just force the touchback. It'll give our defense quite a bit of room to work with. This might be foolish, I'm not sure, but I'm kind of expecting a pass on this first down. And they will step back, looking to throw. Guys are open. Jenkins can't get there. They find Kevin Banks. And it's 13 yards, basically for free. Good thing is we know their game plan is run, run, run. So that's what we're going to be expecting. Focused in on it, bringing the blitz. And there's a man completely covered. Spencer Stanley, our interception, uh, our interception leader. Well, he was there for the interception if it came, but the ball just thrown away. So second and 10, maybe expecting the run on this one. And no, they're completely changing their tune, stepping back to throw. Quarterback gets away from some pressure, and he's going to get the first down. Oh, that's frustrating. Should have been a third and long, but he just escapes the pressure and then manages to fall over uh, the tackler. This one is a weird little uh, play action. Sandcastle's there for the deflection. I'm going to go so far as to say that wasn't a great play call. Uh, just didn't seem like it had a high opportunity to work. This one stepping back to throw again. Another short one over the middle. This one is completed, and Banks has four yards across midfield. Defense has been pretty good on these third downs so far. What's it going to be this time? A slip screen for Alabama. Phillips needs to get the tackle. He does pull him down. It's a loss of a yard. And Bama at midfield might have to punt this ball away. So again, the defense able to keep these guys from moving. Bad field position is the only reason that uh, Bama gets it, and they're going to go for it. It's a fake on the punt. Franklin can't get the tackle. It's stiff arm cheese. Marquise Jackson can't do it either, and it's a first down on the fake punt for Alabama. Goodness gracious, that is really painful. So painful, I'm bringing the house. I don't want them to get any positive yards. Expecting the run, it is a draw, and they're going to lose three. We dial up the pressure after getting slapped in the face on that fake, and it works out for us. Crimson Tide does not want to quit on this game. Second and 13. Don't want to go down if you're them any more than you already are. They run with a screen, and it works pretty well for seven. Honestly, a little bit surprised that Sandcastle was able to get off his block well enough to uh, get there. Don Riley, big tackle, forces another fourth down, and we might see Bama settle for the field goal. I do not know these guys at all. Super aggressive for the Crimson Tide. They're going to go for it on fourth and one. They could make it a one-point game. Instead, they're saying, let's go for it. It's a handoff, and our defense shuts them down again. Bama could have nine points right now, but their aggression is costing them. So the second turnover on downs, they've already got a fake uh, punt. These guys are really, really ballsy. First and 10, stepping back, looking to throw. Uh, can't throw one up. I was just going to yeet one downfield for Marquise, but we take the sack instead. This one kind of turning into a defensive battle early on. They're bringing some pressure, trying to get rid of it. Marquise, it's right over his head. He had a blocker and so much space to work with. I think that could have been a touchdown for sure, if not a massive gain. Instead, it's third and 20 for us to try and pick up here, and I'm not too confident that we're going to be able to get that done. Let's see. They are bringing a lot of pressure outside the pocket. We go throwing it deep downfield. That's not who I wanted to go to, and it's intercepted by Sherman. He's got a decent return. Bama starting with the ball at the 30 on this drive. I meant to throw it to uh, whoever was coming across us, and I threw it to Barr on the out route. That one could come back to hurt quite a bit. So again, Alabama will start another drive with good field position, and they're going to look to continue to keep throwing, and Jenkins was just a millisecond too late to get there and maybe get the interception. Joe Hines, the backup quarterback, starts this game 8 of 10 through the air. He throws a laser to find his man on that one. This one to run up the middle. Nobody there. Broken tackle and nine more yards as Bama will take their second timeout. Just a minute and 35 left on the clock. They are pretty worried about the uh, the time left on said clock. This one's going to be a run. We're there with Will Phillips to get the stop. Third and three. Not going to take the timeouts yet, but I'm definitely thinking about it. They brought the man in motion, but I knew they were going to go to the running back just like I expect them to on this play. And it is going to be a handoff to the running back. He finds the space and he gets the first and goal. Just barely. 
Let's see if we can bring this pressure. They seem to really enjoy running the ball. This one, another one. He's got some space and he's got some yards and I'm gonna start taking timeouts. A minute and five left, barring any sort of penalties. They can only run so many plays, so we want to save as much time as we can. This one a run towards the edge. Jenkins there to stand him up, and we just barely get the stop. It's third goal at the goal line. Well, we're going to come out in the goal line set. They're going to come out with four wide receivers. I'm calling this a run up the middle, and it's going to be a pass. Somebody's got to be open, and there it is. Three wide receivers wide open for Bama. They find Corey Ralph, and they're going to take a three-point lead with just 55 seconds before the end of the half. Offense has got to get it going right here. Would love to be in the lead, or at the very least, tied. Uh, going into the locker rooms here. Blocking is pretty solid for Marquise. One man to beat down the sideline. Is he going to do it? The 10, the 5. Marquise knocked out of bounds at the one-yard line. Should have dove for that one. Maybe this will give us a chance to burn a little bit more clock. This man is something else. That was actually really, really, really close. Unable to get it done. It looks like it's going to be up to Mike Fontaine, and he's going to get it no problem. So we burn maybe another second off the clock, but just like that, we are back in the lead. Four points up. Now 43 seconds left in the half. I'm going to try and make this one honestly a little bit returnable. Might be a little bit too deep, but if they do bring it out, no. Just going to be a touchback. That's a shame. I would love for them to burn a little bit of that clock on a return. Well, we can expect them to uh, be passing the ball on this one. Looks like they're going to step back to throw, and we get the early stop. We might just see the clock run here. Second seven, 25 seconds to go. Will they run the play? I would expect them to. I think if you're Bama, you would be wise to. You're giving us the ball to start the second half, but no. Looks like they want to burn the clock. So we're going to send everybody deep for this final play. Not give anything up. Let them complete the pass, but uh, those 18 yards really don't matter at the end of it. So we, uh, we hold on there. I feel like we could be up more, but also Alabama, with how risky they've played, could be up a ton if those plays work out for him instead 14 10 as we head into the locker rooms this half marquise has had a pretty solid game so far two great kick returns including one just a yard shy of the end zone right on eh, not the best not the worst our running game has been okay we've just been a little bit short on a few plays otherwise we could be up big as well honestly if things continue the way they are into this next half i think that we'll be looking at uh Coastal Carolina is SEC Conference Champions. We got Marquise back to return once again. Already up four. Oh my gosh, this one at the back of the end zone. We're bringing it in. Nine yards deep. Oh, that was a terrible decision. We're starting from our, our old nine-yard line. No blocking available. Uh, and we got a long ways to go. Let's throw up a bomb here, expecting them to bring pressure, and it looks like they will. We're going to yeet it deep. Marquise, half step on his man, can't come down with it. That was great defense from Brian Sherman, who already has an interception in this game. Let's go for the positive yards on second down. Running the ball, blocking nowhere to be found. Mike Fontaine gets drilled in the backfield. It's third and 13 as we get even closer to our own end zone. And Alabama has come out to start this second half swinging. Putting us in a tough spot. Radon's going to need to find a man. Pressure coming. Chad Bradshaw comes down with it and the drive stays alive. Just uh, our fourth completion on our seventh attempt of the game as we will run this one again. Yeah, offensive line just not getting a good push to start this half. We will keep it going though. Got to keep running the ball. Try to set things up. Maybe shouldn't have cut that one back, but we found a couple of yards. Another third and long, though. All right. Well, can we complete another big pass? This one. Oh, no. I scramble outside the pocket. Maybe a mistake. X is wide open. Williams completely unguarded. They lost him, and it's going to be a massive 72-yard touchdown. Malcolm Williams ran his route, stayed in bounds, thankfully. And that just slipped away. Unnoticed downfield. Radon getting the throw off. A beautiful one before he's going to take any contact. And just like that, we're up 11. Well, uh, if you're enjoying the video, especially after a play like that, quickly on this kickoff, scroll down. Maybe hit the like button. Helps out a ton. And, uh, well, 
I don't know. I think we deserve it after a cool play like that. Let's see if the defense can also be deserving of it. Expecting some early passing on this drive, if I'm being honest. Just feels like uh, maybe they're going to feel a little sense of urgency to start moving the football. Quarterback scrambling. He's going to just throw one up, and Smith's going to get the interception. That was a terrible decision from the backup quarterback of Alabama. Didn't want to take the sack, and he just threw that into quadruple coverage. Logan Smith came down with it. So things were looking strong for Alabama early in this half, but just like that... They've gone from bad to worse as we've found Malcolm Williams once again for another first down. If we can find the end zone on this drive, it might be enough to just completely shut out Alabama the rest of this game. I feel like they're going to get desperate and if our defense continues to perform, it might be enough. Crimson Tide still doing a very solid job at stopping the run, however, so the passing game will need to be there. And they're bringing pressure. We find Mike Fontaine, but he can't. Get away from the pressure soon enough and build up ahead of steam. Only five yards, another third and long for us. On our last one of these, we scored a touchdown. I'm not expecting that on this play, but I think Marquise is going to be wide open. And he held on through the contact. He was thrown a little bit too far downfield, but he bails us out. Enjoying the game that we're getting out of raid on so far. Minus the uh, kind of unfortunate interception where we just had to heave it up. Fontaine, decent three-yard run. And we will keep feeding him the rock. No, it's J.J. Barr in as the fullback's going to get his first carry and get a yard. I think I cut that inside. We turn it into two or three, but I was hoping to find the space. This drive has been not an easy one as we have yet another third down to contend with. We'll look to throw. They're not bringing a whole lot of pressure. Somebody's got to go over the middle. And Stewart can't come down with it. Good defense. Uh, just didn't find any ability open soon enough. Didn't want to take the sack, so we're going to settle for this field goal attempt. It's been a long time since I've kicked a field goal in this game, but we got it right down the middle. I was honestly worried we were going to miss that. We extend the lead up two touchdowns with two minutes left in this third quarter. Oh, man, if their quarterback can make another mistake like they just did, I'm going to be so, so happy. Uh, you're in a tough spot if you're Alabama at this point, though. Got to ask yourself the question, is it worth running the ball and burning the clock, or do we try to trust this backup quarterback? First down here, they say we're going to run it, and we find Stewart shortly after he crosses the line. Again, still expecting quite a bit of passing, although on this one, it's a run with a lot of space. Unfortunately, Tyler Stewart just ran into his blockers. So it's third and five, and certainly a chance for the defense to get off the field here. Again, expecting the pass. They will step back, and they throw it short. We're just going to make sure that we get the tackle, do nothing stupid, and we drop him for a loss. Surprisingly good user for me as the punt team will come out, but I'm honestly not certain that they will punt this one away. They've already faked it once in this game, and with the time running out, I wouldn't be surprised, but no. They do kick it down to Marquise, which is, seems like such a dangerous thing to do. Works out for him that time, but he had a lot of space in front of him. Already up two scores with great field position here at the closing stages of the third quarter. What can we do on this drive? Give it to Mike Fontaine up the middle. Let him pick up a couple. And we will step back looking to throw on this second down. Trying to see if we can find somebody deep. Extending the play. Finding Marquise through the contact. That's a tough throw and a tough catch. But we got two Heisman candidates. Uh, more often than not, I think they're going to get it done. Just our sixth third down of the game. But we have so many touchdowns. So it's obviously working pretty well for us. Raid on keeping it. Oh my gosh, on the option, and he's inside the red zone. Absolutely broke a man's ankles. And just like that, picks up 19 yards. So that is going to be it for our third quarter. We'll go ahead and head into the fourth field. I'm pretty confident that we're going to beat this Alabama team. They're coming in only ranked 20th in the country. They're 8-4. and four. We should expect to win this one. question is, how easy are we going to make this fourth quarter on ourselves? We can start this up by uh, making it a 21-point lead. That would be fantastic. Mike Fontaine on the carry, cutting it back, finding a little bit of space. Gets a good six yards on first down. Bring us inside the 15. We'll try a very interesting counter read option. 
on second and four we make the correct read supposedly but radon's gonna take a little bit of a hit uh gets three yards it's still third down though big question for the offensive line here as honestly i feel pretty confident they're showing pressure but it's on the edges nothing up the middle and that's exactly where we're sending mike fontaine he's got the first and goal just uh didn't dial up the pressure where they really should have Bama in a lot of danger. You're running out of time. We're going to go jet sweep, giving it to Chad Bradshaw. And, well, I tried to get upfield. I might have been able to stretch that to the edge, but we got two yards out of the play. We're going to come out, show and run here inside the five, but it's a play action. Looking for one of the tight ends on second and goal. They're covering it pretty well. Oh, my gosh, and a great dive from Mike Callahan. Just bats the ball away. So it's now third and goal. And we'll have to see, can we pass this one into the end zone? Obviously looking for Marquise. He's got the one-on-one -on -one coming back. Coverage just isn't there. He holds on through the contact and it's a touchdown. Raid on 10 of 15 finds his second man of the day uh, there in the end zone. That one in the big bomb to Malcolm Williams. And that's going to extend our lead. All right, well, Frederick can kick this one away. Uh, but if you're Alabama, uh, man, sense of urgency's really got to be there on this drive. So expecting these guys to be passing. What can we do to slow them down? As long as we keep them in bounds, short of the line to gain, we got to keep this clock moving. Kind of going to be expecting a lot of out routes and corner routes. So we might go into the zone here late. We'll see this one thrown up. Spencer Stanley gets the interception. We take over as the user and he gets his sixth interception here in his true freshman season. Backup quarterback with his second interception of the day. 13 of 17 through the air. Honestly, those are really his only two missteps. And it is really going to hurt Bama because I think it might be time to start to burn the clock in this one. They tried to go for the out route. And we were able to get a guy into position and thankfully he held onto the ball. As we will start to burn the clock. Feeling a little bit of pressure outside the pocket. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Why? Might be open. It's a tough throw and I'm lucky that that one wasn't picked off. Should have just scrambled. Bad decision for me. Well, we will have to throw now. Third and 10, stepping back. X was open for a second and we can take the sack. I just, we got the interception and then I forgot what we were doing. <laughs> Fourth and 21, we got to punt it away. Only saving grace here is that we should be able to limit them to a pretty mediocre return, hoping we've gotten all of it. Uh, we just have to hope that the blocking isn't incredible for Bama. And we've backed them up decently. Two and a half minutes left in this game. Obviously, I don't want to start celebrating too early, but it certainly feels like we should be able to crown ourselves as SEC champions here. Quarterback scrambling. He's going to get a yard, but take a pretty big shot. Unfortunately for him, in a situation like that, the clock keeps ticking away. 2.20 left in the game now. They step back looking to throw again. Quarterback decides to run again, and he takes another big hit. Curious to know if he's just a little bit rattled and doesn't want to throw another pick or if he was told not to throw unless it was obviously wide open. Taylor misses the tackle on the screen and that's going to be a big gain as Crimson Tide managed to get back across midfield. Just didn't come out with the mindset of stopping a screen on that one. So a mistake from me as they will look to throw again and my coverage isn't the best and well, neither is Will Phillips. Well, let's go into this 3-3-5 and see what we can do. Try to slow them down in any way that we can at this point. Quarterback again stepping back to pass all the time in the world. Eventually finds his running back wide open for 12 yards. That's one of the pitfalls of uh, bringing only three guys in the rush. Is the pressure just doesn't get there. And this time I'm going to allow him to throw that one. Stops the clock, but they only get a yard. The out of bounds will... Uh, take them out of the hurry up temporarily. So we've made a couple of substitutions and that might have hurt us tremendously. Maybe should have taken the time out so the starters could continue to play as Hines has found uh, another man open for a touchdown and Bama makes it a two-score game again with a minute and a half and all their timeouts. Thankfully, I have remembered to put out the hands team as Alabama will try their first onside kick. It goes right into the hands 
Uh, I think that's Jonathan Williams. No, it's Malcolm Williams. I will never get those two figured out correctly. Unfortunately for Bama, though, that could spell it a minute and a half. They're going to have to start spending their timeouts as we will just run and hopefully run this clock out. And that's a great carry on first down. Seven yards. A first down here ends it, I think. Just have to keep finding the tenacity in the run game. Second and three. There's a gap up the middle. Mike Fontaine has the first down and a whole lot more as he finds nine. And Alabama takes their second timeout. Let's hand it off again. This time to Marquise Jackson on the fly sweep. He's got apparently, wow, I don't uh, some space to run. He should have been dropped for a loss, but got two yards. And Bama takes their final timeout. So with just a minute and 21, it looks like we have done it 13-0 now. We win the SEC and officially stamp our uh, ticket into the playoffs. I can't imagine that we would be anything other than the first seed is I'm realizing I don't need to uh, I don't need to pass this ball but we might do it anyways if somebody's wide open let's just throw it up Mike Fontaine into the end zone oh man a little bit of salt in the wound for Alabama uh, play broke down coverage broke down and we have found the end zone with just 33 seconds remaining we have extended this game a little bit longer than I initially wanted it to go, but, uh, well, that works out as long as we get the win, right? 38 to 17. Alabama's going to end the regular season or just end their season at eight and six. And you got to imagine that, uh, they're going to the drawing board after this one. Uh, you know, they obviously will hope to win their bowl game, but that's not a good year for a 99 overall team. 29 seconds they're not saying uh that it's over yet but you gotta think at some point you just give up right normally at this point i would be getting mad at the team that we're playing for trying to run up the score or whatever it is that they think they're doing but to be fair we did score an unnecessary touchdown so i'm not mad at them right now third and seven and the question will be can we get them off the field and get this one over with 19 seconds left it's a handoff and it works tremendously well <laughs> get the first down i feel like i should be a little bit surprised but i'm honestly not they're gonna even spike the ball here now with 11 seconds just to make sure we are top form i've taken a timeout to let some players rest up they're gonna go with the option on this one and well, that's going to be game. No way they get another one off. Kind of an interesting way to end it. Durham Finch gets the tackle for Lawson as the clock hits triple zeros. We have won the SEC. Uh, just absolutely dominated this season. It was a good win from the start. Defense played really, really well this game. Holding them just to 17. Uh, a couple of really nice plays, including this one, the play of the game, where we just find Malcolm Williams in wide open space. Uh, offense could have done a couple of things better but uh, overall played very well this was just a complete game from our team to come out and beat a 99 overall Alabama and uh, you know make it a, another disappointing loss for him on the year Mike Fontaine is our player of the game 18 carries for 53 yards is a little bit unassuming but a lot of touchdowns and we can raise up that SEC championship trophy uh, feeling good about that one that's for sure so again, it ends up as a solid victory for us. Uh, we gave up 117 rushing while only picking up 61 ourselves, but uh, we ended up passing for more than them. Holding them to 178 is really impressive for this team. And then we win the turnover battle with those two interceptions. So very, very pleased with the team. Uh, Mike, obviously our offensive player of the game. Logan Smith is our defensive player of the game with seven tackles, a tackle for loss and an interception. So we have won the SEC championship. We'll go ahead and add that one in and we will advance to the uh, bowl season. Uh, but we're just going to see who won conference championships and whatnot because we're going to save the playoff selection for the start of uh, next episode. And well, that's unfortunate. Radon and Marquise come up short in the Heisman race. Kevin Jones, that Wisconsin running back, gets it. 250 carries for 1,800 yards, which is pretty impressive. Uh, 400 receiving yards and 25 total touchdowns. 
I still think Marquise is more deserving, but he comes in fourth place, so obviously I'm wrong. And here we're going to see them just sweep up in the awards. Uh, Radon wins the Walter Camp. Uh, Don Riley wins the Bednarik. Don Riley wins the Nagurski. Don Riley wins the Butkus. Uh, Marquise Jackson wins the Return Award, the Johnny the Jet Rogers. And we win. Uh, Brandon Goon wins Coach of the Year. That's a lot of hardware coming home as, uh, well, currently we're slated to play USC, but that's all going to change. Let's just go quickly take a look at our uh, scores for those conference championship games. Uh, Ohio beats Northern Illinois to win the MAC. Middle Tennessee State wins the Conference USA. Colorado State wins the Mountain West. Clemson wins the ACC. USC wins the Pac-12. And it's Ohio State beating Wisconsin in overtime for the Big Ten Championship. We'll take one last peek at the All-American list before we wrap up this episode. We can see Radon doesn't even get first-team quarterback all NCA. Marquise is there as a wide receiver. Uh, Wilson Taylor, Mackie Phillips, Riley Stanley, Jenkins Smith. Oh my goodness, that's like our entire defense first-team all Americans. Second team, we've got Raid on there. Robert Gray, our center, makes it. Gamara Kelly, Durham Finch, uh, both making it up there. So very impressive. The freshman team, Mike Fontaine. Surprisingly, I thought he had a pretty disappointing season, but the uh, kid from Oklahoma, 79 overall, gets that honor. Uh, so does our left guard, Nick Pittman. And Spencer Stanley, our corner as well. He had six interceptions on the season. Definitely deserving. How about the all SEC? We should have a ton right on Marquise Robert, uh, Kelly Wilson, Finch, Taylor, Mackey, Phillips, Riley, Stanley, Sandcastle, Jenkins, and Smith. That's a, that's a lot of players. <laughs> uh, how about the second team, all SEC? Basically, the players are the positions that we didn't have on the first team. Fontaine Williams, Williams Dunn. And Holmes all making it onto that second team list. That is absolutely absurd. We're going to get a ridiculous amount of XP for that. We're already close to leveling up again. So that is uh, absolutely phenomenal. We get recognized 13-0, uh, number one. But who will we be playing? We're going to wait for those playoff selections for the start of next episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button. Let me know who you think our playoff uh, matchup in round one is going to be against. And I've got to quickly think of a hint for the next team we're moving to. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good one that doesn't leave out too much, but also doesn't take away too much. Uh, okay, the team that we are moving to next season is not in a state that borders the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, that's going to wipe out, I imagine, quite a few. Uh, so, again, uh, alongside your predictions for who we're playing first round of the playoffs, I still have not seen anybody guess correctly. I think the team that we're moving to is uh, pretty pretty random, pretty uh, unguessable, but I'm sure somebody will get it. Uploads should be coming out a little bit more frequently now. Uh, I took my little vacation, so back home, and we can start to pump these videos out much more frequently. Um, if you guys get this video to around 100 likes in the first day or so, we'll go back-to-back -back uploads, and we'll keep that going throughout the entire playoffs for the rest of the season. So uh, smash that like <laughs> Hit the like button on each one of the next videos that comes out and you could have a new video for the next three or four or five days. I don't know how long it'll go. While you're doing both of those things, please feel free to also hit subscribe and then head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community discord, and also the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the TL Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.